right, all good on my end, we can begin. So yeah, uh, give me your thoughts about this matchup. What exactly did you think uh, went wrong here? And what would you like to improve first? So I think like 90% of my trades were poor, like really poor. And uh, yeah, I just, uh, I don't know. I just like, it. I felt like it was a really tough matchup for me, even though like, I think theoretically it's not the toughest matchup for Storm Spirit, right? Uh, it's on the harder side, I wouldn't say toughest, but yeah, it's on the harder side. First thing we can start with is uh, when we see the draft phase, after, uh, as the game just loads, we can think about our itemization. So, what would you say in your head to yourself? How would you, how should you play this lane? I mean, what do you expect Pugna to do? Uh, I expect him to spam his, uh, his key on me stuff, so I, I wanted to go for a magic wand. Really? And then get, uh, actually go for the ball first and then get the magic, uh, magic stack or whatever it's called. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. So, uh, since we have concluded that Bugna usually is the one that kind of likes to spam stuff, not only yeah. Bugna, we have uh, also, uh, let's say, Lena, Shadow Friend, uh, heroes like that. They love to spam stuff. So, we can think about if, if the enemy usually likes to spam stuff, how can we capitalize on the spam? So, what I personally like to do is take away some of my starting items just so I can fit in a wand first, because I know it will pay off really fast, because then we will we'll want to use the spells. And then whatever stats I would have gained from stat items would be covered by the wand, so it's a really good investment against the spammers. So in this matchup, before the game even began, I would think about how I can fit the magic wand, not after the runes, not after the bottle, but as soon as possible. So for that to happen, I would probably go with uh, one or two Arnold branches, the magic stick, tangos of course, even the tangos, but we can forego fairy fire and we can forego circlet, because it'll pay off by the one charge itself. And you should still have enough gold left so you can reach the two minute battle timing. Did that make sense? Yeah, actually I remember now, I itemized based on, because I thought I was gonna go uh, against Sensor, not Pugna, that's why. Oh. But actually, it's the same idea, I think, it's because they're both going to spam anyway. Uh, silencer, no, he doesn't spam at all. He will skill W and just right-click you all the time. Okay. But yeah, it's something to think about against spammy heroes like Shadow Friend and Pugna and Lina. And I, I don't remember anyone else at the moment. Mag Magnus, maybe. I don't see many Magnuses nowadays. But yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think it was going to be Pugna, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, half of the matchup preparation is always thinking about the starting items before you are even in the lane. So yeah, one of the advantages you can always have is, is uh, preparing yourself for the spam by getting an earlier wand. Okay, let's let's now let's uh, let's talk about the actual matchup. I'm not sure if that's a uh, this matchup's particular thing, or. Just a like thing. Like the creep wave? No, no, no. The creep waves. The creep waves usually are a kind of a iffy topic because if you miss, you miss. There is no strategy to it. The, the thing I wanted to talk about was actually the ward placement. Ideally, you will want to always, always, always place the ward before the enemy can seize it. Otherwise, if you delay it, enemy, better enemies will take note that you had the ward in your inventory and then suddenly you don't and they might have a pretty good idea where you would have placed it. And either way, you will want to reach for the 2-minute runes. Okay. But yeah, as soon as you notice a failed block, you must think to yourself, how can I fix this? I Like, you understand that this is not an ideal, uh, an, an ideal situation, and you want to make it better. So you, as you go to the lane, as soon as you fail the block, you gotta think it. I failed the block, how can I fix it? Uh, how many strategies do you know for manipulating lane equilibrium? Um, like, I, don't, I don't think that much. I just... You so, just, if you... You like so to go example, with the flow, yeah? 
Yeah, yeah, but no, necessarily there's a flow. Like right now, do you want like if I want the the wave to push towards me, I'm just gonna like try to freeze. Okay, so the thing is, actually, I don't play Dora that much. I'm more of a League of Legends player, and I just playing started playing Dora like a month ago or something. Okay. Yeah. Okay, pretty fresh, pretty fresh. Okay, okay. and uh, I have like two accounts, and uh, uh, so the thing is. For example, in this matchup, usually, like, you're saying about, like, you're talking about freezing the lane, right? So if you want, like, the lane to push towards my tower, correct? Uh, more or less. We'll, okay, We'll yeah. talk about that later, but sure. Uh, continue your thoughts, please. Yeah, so pretty much if I want to do that, uh, I usually try, just try to right-click them, get them um, behind my... Um, like to my range creep, and I start just like trying to see us there safely. And eventually, if I have like lesser creeps than them, that lane is gonna push towards me. I feel like that's uh, that's how it works, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the gist of it, sure. All right, so um, since you're a pretty new player, that yeah, that's actually an important information. You could have told this earlier because that kind of changes how I would formally formulate my thoughts for you. So uh, the biggest I played impact... a lot back then. I played like in 2014, like uh, a lot, but I haven't played since. That's why. So I just got back. <laughs> okay, so not so, so not actually new. Okay, 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 okay. Um, well, still, what what I will say is will apply to your games in the future, and 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 if you will, if you will keep it in mind and try to execute it, you will. You should naturally raise raise MMR if that's a thing you do, and the enemy doesn't. So, uh, first thing of the thoughts we will share tonight is. Uh, the first thing you want to do as a storm specifically and other pushy heroes at 99% of the matches is to begin the process of making the entire wave push to the enemy high ground. With storm it's super easy, basically just uh, hit the range creep a couple of times, uh, let's hit the remnant, secure, secure it, do it two times and the wave will be cleared, you might have to from two to four CSs, and the wave will travel to the enemy high ground. Uh, can you tell me why do we do this? Why do you push the lane up in their high ground? Yeah, why do you wave clear as fast as possible? I guess the only way I can see is just to uh, maybe go farm like the camps or something, like to get more farm like other sources. I don't know. Uh, I honestly, I don't know why would you push the lane up to their high ground because I feel like if you do that you're actually just like you're gonna lose like most of the trades right because you have a tired chance to miss especially when you're playing against Spugna. Uh See mid lane isn't exactly about the trades it's about creating a situation where the enemy has a disadvantage uh, be it at last hitting at trading okay. at anything if you if you have the tools to create a disadvantage, you must always use these tools. And as a storm, you have these tools, and most of the time, the enemy, especially at level one, will not. So the reason why in this particular matchup, we force the wave under the tower, and in most matches in general, is that Pugna will not be able to both last hit and harass you at the same time because he will be too busy focusing on the creeps. Additionally, he will also not be able to deny you as effectively. If you keep the lane static, Storm will actually lose the trades against most heroes. Because okay. that's the nature. Storm has shorter range, uh, no long range spells at the earlier levels. So by pushing the wave as fast as possible, we create ourselves an advantageous situation where we can freely last hit our own uh, enemy creeps, when we can mostly freely deny our creeps and get some good hits into the enemy mid laner. Okay. Uh, also, one more note, a very useful thing to do. If you want to manipulate the wave, that is, if you would like those three melee creeps to suddenly start hitting your range creep. Uh, yes, usually you right click the mid hero, but he, if he's nowhere to be seen, like right now it's blocked by vision, because the ward placement was, was not happening, you can always just right click any other hero you can see on the map, 
and it will achieve the same effect. It will aggro the closest creeps. So if 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 even if you don't see the Pugna right now, if you would move your camera bottom real quick, right click the um, bum, 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 Rubik for a second, then camera back to the mid lane, you would see those three creeps moving to the your range creep, which again creates a advantageous position for you to deny and disadvantages for the Pugna to last it because he's pretty far away and chances are if you do it quick enough he will not be in time for the last hit. Okay. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, useful tricks. Now, I'm gonna talk Storm specifically. And of course, other heroes apply, apply to it too, but for Storm, especially for Storm, mana okay. is everything. And the, I, I, I don't see really see any reason for you to use the Remnant right here. Uh, what what would you say was your thought process for using this Remnant? I wanted to get the melee creep and deny at the same time. Right, but none of none, none of these creeps are in the kill range when you're oh, playing. Oh, you're the talking remnant. about that remnant? I thought you were talking about the other remnant. This remnant, I expected him to come up to hit the creeps, so I just placed it there so it hit him when he comes up. That that was just my thought process. No, no, th that one was fine. I mean I, I Oh I, yeah, this this one. This one, this one, yeah, sorry. Yeah, same same this... thing. The creeps are nowhere near the kill range, so they're not in threat of being denied yet. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's something you will need to think about a lot if you want to improve specifically as a Storm player, because mana is everything and you, you will need to learn uh, good mana management. That's the first thing that distinguishes a novice, no, novice, I don't know how to spell this word, novice Storm player against a medium experienced Storm player. Okay. If there is no reason for Remnant, then you just save your mana. Okay. And yeah. advanced strategies, which we might talk about way further down the road, is that we will want to create situations where we don't even want to use mana, where we can simply right-click stuff. But that's for another session. Here, exactly here, is where you do want to use Remnant, because there's too much, too many uncertainties if you can get the creep or not. That's true. And I can see the creep was missed. So yeah, another thing to think about in your matches is that when the creeps go up your high ground, actually, let me backtrack a bit. Five minutes ago, we have talked about why would a player push the creep whip to the high ground. This is a very good illustration because as you can see, Pugna has done what I was talking about. He created a disadvantageous situation for you. He made you miss the creeps. C can you see can you can you now better visualize why did we push to the high ground? Yeah. yeah. He is full health, he had three uh three hits on you, three right clicks, and he forced you to miss some creeps. Okay, anyway, back to my previous thought is as soon as you know that the wave will be coming to your high ground, your mind, your full attention, should be on the ranged creep. Like, yes, the melee creep still matter, but the ranged creep always matters way more. So as soon as, you, as soon as you register that this melee creep will die, you know, you understand that the tile will, will switch to the ranged creep. And before that happens, you must, you must physically, your storm must physically be in range of this range creep, just so you can place a remnant and ensure that the creep dies and you get the gold. Okay, but in the process of that, I'm gonna take a lot of damage from Pugna, right? That's okay. We will always okay. trade damage for the range creep because it yields the most gold, it yields the most experience. If you do it correctly, basically any damage you take will be negated, negated by the fact that your battle will be coming soon because you have secured enough last hits. 
True. Also, that's why we have the tangles and the branched tangles. Yeah. Yeah, that's another thing I, I, I didn't mention before. Uh, basically, laning, especially in the mid lane, it's really... As a mid lane player, there's so many things you have to keep in mind. We have talked, uh, so far, we have talked lane equilibrium. We have talked about pushing. We have talked about uh, keeping an eye on the range creep. That's only the tip of the iceberg. There's so many more things. One of them that I haven't yet mentioned is that same concept is that as soon as you are aware that the wave will be pushing to your high ground, you must also think about that you will take extra damage because the enemy mid laner will be more free mean? to harass you. Yeah. So in this moment right here on the screen, the ideal situation is as you walk back to place the iron branch and eat it with a tango. Because in anticipation of extra damage, we can prepare ourselves with regeneration. Because right now you are a quarter of your health down and you still haven't started the regen process. And the better mid lane players will capitalize on that. They will see you at lower health, they will try to punish you. And to avoid that, you basically always stay on a good health threshold. Did you catch all that? Yeah. All right, all right. Now that the wave is favorable on your high ground, you have, we have, as a mid lane players, we have two options. If the situation is advantageous for us, I mean, you're level two now, he is still level one. If the situation is advantageous for us, we could try to uh, harass him a little, a little bit, but because we have neglected to take care of our own health status, the advantage, the advantage does not exist for us because of our low health. If we try to man up and trade, he would simply hew us to death. So now that we have concluded that uh, trading is not an option, plan B is again to push the wave as soon as possible. So you should prioritize the range creep, enemy's range creep, with your right clicks and the remnant. This again would clear the wave pretty fast and make the entire wave push to his ground, high ground, which yeah. by default is an advantageous position for you. In this scenario, it's not, it's not ideal either, just because we have neglected to keep our health pool high. I don't know why I'm not eating Tango in that specific situation. It's kind of weird that I didn't, I usually do. I'm okay. going for it. Okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just keep in mind that branch tangos <laughs> will always yield more in the long run. That's why we get them in the lane. They're cost-efficient resources of region. I mean, uh, I gotta ask, you do know that uh, if you plant the branch, you can eat the tango, yes? Yeah. Okay, 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 just checking. Uh... One more thing, I know I'm throwing a lot of things at you, a lot of concepts, no. but there's a lot of concepts you're, you're, you're missing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the, I want you to look at the last five seconds, 10 seconds even. Um, again, as a mid laner, every single second you have to perform an, an action which would benefit you or or this create a disadvantage for for the enemy and that includes uh, manipulating the wave uh, preparing the creeps for better last hit better deny or simply trading hits or doing free free hits into the enemy mid laner and as you can see right now there are many seconds where none of the actions are being taken we could hit our own creeps to mess with the Buckner's Deny performance. You can try to prepare 
enemy creeps for better remnant situation, so you can clear it. Or you can simply, as right now, as of, as of this second, since you are on the high ground and he is not, and the right click you do is better for you and bad for him because of the mischance. So to sum up uh, this segment is that every single second you should perform an action. Okay. Either deny, hit him, hit a creep, do something. Don't sense yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as you get better as a better player, you will understand naturally which action is more beneficial than the other. But just as a starting point, I would like to just to... Even in the bad games, that's a good thing in bad games, you can practice just doing things for the sake of doing things. I think that doesn't help too, that I'm not that comfortable in Storm. Like, I really love playing him. I, st I picked him recently, but I'm still not feeling like really comfortable on him. And uh, I think that's why too, like, I'm trying to focus on multiple stuff. So the overall, like, um, the quality of the, like, the whole thing is just like worse. <laughs> but, but for example, when I play Monkey King or something that I'm actually comfortable on, I feel like I just like to like these little things better because I'm used to playing the character more. Yeah, okay. I, I see where you're coming from. So I would say there's two sol solutions to this very particular problem. Either uh, spend a lot of games with Storm in the bot matches. Or, yeah, might want to refine the base. Sorry? Yeah, just uh, I try to play him a lot, pretty much. No? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you continue to play Storm, these little things will eventually just sort themselves out naturally. I've learned everything purely through Storm. And, and so so did many of my students. So it's it's very feasible, but I mean, if you yourself is uncomfortable, if it's if it's losing your, your games, if you don't feel like you're having fun, then switching to another hero or lear or learning in bad games is a very real possibility. I I really enjoy him when I actually snow wall. It's like super fun. But when I'm, I feel like if I trade evenly in a lane, if I don't snow wall, I feel like I'm meh. Like mid game and late game, not that good, you know? I feel like I have to actually like dominate in the first 10, 15 minutes. And then that's where actually I feel like Storm is really fun to play. <laughs> well, that's a bit of a skewed mindset because uh, Storm who is dominating and Storm who is even. They are the same storm. Uh, unless you lost lane pretty hard, uh, a storm that has feasted on the opposing mid laner and a storm that simply drew in lane and farmed jungle, they will be pretty close to net worth. So you should you should see pretty much the same performance in lanes that you drew even and lanes that you have snowballed. Mm -hmm. At least if you are utilizing the jungle rotations properly, because even 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 in even games that sounded weird, you still have you still always have the jungle options, which we'll talk about later. Okay. But yeah, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I don't want to uh, fill fill you with too much information. We're still at we, we're not even one minute in the replay analysis, and there's so much stuff to to talk about. Okay. Oh, what's that? What's what's that remnant? Did you are you filing for overloads? Yeah, uh, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, that's not a bad habit. You will need to break ASAP again. Man is everything. Okay. Every single remnant you place must have a specific purpose. If you're placing remnant just to help you last hit, at least make sure that rem the remnant itself also hits the creep, not just the overload charge. Even miss that. Not while I'm around. Uh, no, that 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 was not the thing I was going to say. Yeah. Can you guess the thing? I, can you guess the thing I was I would say in this scenario? Can I guess the thing? Yeah. Hmm. Not sure. No. Uh, since Pagna is nowhere near. 
he, he cannot realistically contest it in ISO. Uh, Chu thinks that in this scenario happen. Either you right-click the creep manually to get the last hit, or you drop a remnant. And I think you try to do the second one, right? Yeah, I think I tried to hit it manually, yeah. Yeah, because I wasn't sure if you're, again, fishing for overload charges, or you have noticed too late that the four creeps are ganging up and, and the, the health is falling down too fast for you to react. I thought it was... Uh, yeah, I thought I was gonna get it, but it was like literally a split second for uh, off. Yeah, so the end result is that, yes, you missed, but the more important thing from a habit perspective is that, again, you, you've wasted the remnant, you've wasted mana for things that could have... The, the mana pool that could have served you in many other ways. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And a lot of things I have noticed so far is also, I wouldn't say being caused by you being a no-wise Storm player, uh, but something that you might not be thinking about overall is, uh, I mean, if you're playing Monkey King right now, what would you think about this situation where Pugna has just right-clicked you, and you can see three of the melee creeps traveling to the range creep? What I would think about it. Yeah. What would your... Would you set a new action plan in your head? Uh, yeah. If I was playing Monkey King, I would honestly be a lot more aggressive. I would be on, actually, I would be, like, positioning down here. Down. Like, uh, in front of his melee creeps. Not in front of him, but right next to him. So I can actually hit him and just keep walking, like, try to push him out of the lane. That's if I was playing. And I'll, and I'll also get the deny on the melee creep. On my melee creep. So I would play down, not up. All right, all right. Uh, okay, and in this, in this scenario which I have just described, you you are seeing the opposing mid laner creating a scenario where the three melee creeps of yours are about to gang up on the range creep of his. What would your action plan be? Probably go get the range creep because it's gonna um, it's gonna melt down like really quick now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that's exactly what I want you to always think about, because again, range yep. creeps are really, really important in the lane. So as soon as you see the enemy doing some sort of manipulation, you gotta take a mental note to drop everything you were doing before. And as a storm, you have two choices. You can walk up to the creep to drop a remnant, or you can yeah, create, create, create an overload charge and last hit with that. But right now, you, I think that thought haven't even crossed your mind. Because none of the actions have been taken so far. So yeah, it's something... Yeah, I should have been down there, because I, but I think my thought process was I was scared that he would just, like, uh, like hit me hard. So I was like, okay, uh, do, do I want to trade half my health for, like, that range creep? I'm not sure, so I just took the safe play. Okay, this actually opens up another topic of discussion, is that as long as your health is above certain threshold against certain heroes, there's no way you die. Especially when you're this close to battle. In this particular scenario, when you still have tangos rolling, when you have branch tangos capabilities, the Pugna cannot physically kill you at any moment. Unless your health is like at 20%, you should not be afraid to trade. Okay, let's rewind a bit here. I'm gonna guess your, your thought process here. You went after the creeps in hopes that you could get a deny, right? Uh, yeah, also I wanted to see if I can maybe hit like Pugna once or twice in the same time, yeah. Well, hitting Pugna is definitely out of the question because of the range difference. But as soon as you have also confirmed that you 
do not really have a good chance of, den of denying. As soon as that thought would cross your mind, what I would like you to do in the future matches is that as soon as you see you have no potential place in, this, in, in these kind of moments right here, what you can do is you can walk back and do a little bit of blocking. And usually this a little bit of blocking will ensure that the wave meets again on your high ground, which is extremely beneficial. Sugar. So I'm, I'm kind of uh, just continuing on my previous topic that every single action you, you take should lead to something. And, and right now, instead of just uh, walking around the empty space here, we can take a certain kind of action, which is walking back and doing a little bit of blocking. And that will create an advantageous situation. Okay. And yeah, as you can see, the result is that Pogna instead got the advantage here with the high ground. And that's, that's good. You did a good thing. You, you, you recognized the disadvantage and you attempted to fix it with the right click wave manipulation. And let's see what happens next. Because that was a good move. That was a good move. Even now, you, you, you have about the same HP, but from level 3 onwards, you have the advantage because of the potential vortex combo. So, uh, two things I would like to point out here. The first one is that the range creep is unattended, and that's that what you need to secure at all times. But we talked about this before, so I don't see the need to repeat it right now or the future matches. The second important thing is that uh, just like you should think about securing your range creeps, you can think about denying Pugna's range creep. Like, very, very clearly, we can see that Pugna is physically moving close to both last hit the creep and hit you at the same time. Uh, do you see the scenarios when you play? Like, if you see a certain opponent movement, do you think to yourself that the opponent wants to do certain things? Like, in this case, the do the yeah. deny and, and harass yeah you see those things yeah right so yeah again something to think about as soon as you see a certain movement you can also think about how to react to it and in this particular scenario from level three onwards this is a really nice opportunity as soon as you see him getting close that's a vortex combo not only does he take massive damage he will not get the last hit you will still get experience from beyond range creep, even if you're if even if you are further away. So yeah, uh, part of playing storm or mid lane mid laners in general is to punish opponents' mistakes. Bugness movement right now is a mistake. It's a very punishable punishable mistake, which you can punish as soon as level three. Did yeah, I should sense? have honestly. Yeah, I should have vortex. Dropped the remnant right there. Could have killed the creep, my melee creep too. The melee creep too, and hit him. Yeah, yeah, so it yeah. was going to be like yeah. three. Like yeah, that's a lot of uh, good results achieved with one action. And yeah. that's that's the mindset I would like you to be in. Instead, um, what I see is like your playstyle is. I'm certain it's it is because of the unfamiliarity of the hero, but. The place, the kind of playstyle is if you're right now at like ten percent of health, and you're afraid Pugna will kill you. So yeah, uh, as long as you have good region, you should try to be a little bit more aggressive, because even if you make mistakes, as long as you have high health pool, you will not be punished too hard for it. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I got nothing here. Uh, 
one more thing is to keep an eye on the cost of the bottle and try to get it shipped ASAP, which would be as soon as you last as as you got the last on the first read. That's it right here. You have hit the threshold. You can purchase and ship it out. Yep. There we go. There we go. A little bit of blocking. That's good. Again, Pogna is playing real aggressively, which is not ideal for Pogna because your health is at very good state. Your mana, even after being a little bit wasteful, is still at a very good state. If he goes like that, he deserves to be punished. You see moments like this is where you hit the remnant, uh, the vortex, the vortex combo, and Pogna next time will think twice about dancing so freely in the mid lane. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Yeah, of course, runes should be taken care of, either picked up or denied. You shouldn't give two runes to the opponent. Okay, a couple things to break down. Uh, one thing is about Storm versus Pugna matchup in general. Or more like, uh, like anyone against Pugna is that as soon as Pugna hits level 3, he, just like you get the Vortex combo, he gets the uh, Decrepify and Q combo, which is also very, very damaging for you. and even more so than the Wardless Campbell because he can spam it much more often. So, yeah, as soon as he hits level 3, your mindset should change that if you hang out in the middle of the river too much, the Pugna will keep stacking these combos on you, and eventually you will either die or be forced out. So, level 3 onwards, your mindset should immediately change, change to wave clearing, the creeps ASAP, just so Pugna cannot freely sit in the mid lane and keep comboing you. I mean, from what we talked about, that's the mindset you should be from level 1, just to push the creep wave. But from level 3 onwards, it is especially uh, important because of the combo stacking from Pugna. Did that make sense? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Especially if you see the enemy mid laner move away, either to the camps for stacking or for the rune. That's the perfect cue for you to start being real aggressive on this wave right here. Just going all out with the right clicks. Every single second you right click something, prepare them for the remnant. And by the time Pugna comes back, the wave is already traveling to, to the tower and you're not in danger anymore. If you see the enemy move away, that's your cue. In unfavorable matchups, that's your cue to start pushing ASAP. Yeah. But yeah, because you, you you did not execute these particular actions, he gets a lot of free combos into you. So ideally, I should be either like like either either up here or like uh, pushing the waves towards their tower, but I shouldn't be in the middle, pretty much. Yeah, ideally, ideally, the wave should be already on his tower. But if that didn't happen, then yeah, you should be a little bit further away and aim to last hit with the overloads instead of remnants. Okay. Uh, one more note on the water combo. Is that as soon as you click vortex? And the hit connects. Oh, actually, there's two things. I think you have stacked two charges into one, so one went to waste. Oh, I thought I right clicked and then I queued, and then uh, I think the timing was so tight but that it didn't actually register or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. L luckily, it's a really easy thing to learn. Again, bot matches, uh, that's something I would prescribe as homework to you. 
not because of the overload thing, but because of the uh, Vortex combo in general, is what I don't see, I haven't seen you doing, is that as soon as the overload hit from the Vortex connects, you need to physically move the hero closer, just so if any hero wants to walk away, he would still eat the remnant. Mm, okay. Yeah, but I right see. now, if, if Bogna simply walked away, yeah, he did that. He simply walked away and the remnant doesn't hit. Oh, that's so, right, he didn't get overload. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. If as soon as you press vortex and cancel the animation with the right click, you still need to move a little bit more forward. Just so when you place remnant, the enemy will get slowed by the next overload and it will still eat the remnant. So but like I said, it's a very easy thing to fix just with practice in the demo lobby or bot mode. Yeah, right now you're doing the correct thing, you're playing very passively, because now Bogda is actually a pretty huge threat. Uh, and, and the bad thing about this is that you have played pretty much the same passiveness in the first few levels, when there was absolutely no reason to do so. Uh, you can even try to pull Pogna into the tower range here. So he would need a few tower hits. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't expect you to notice all these little plays you can do just yet. Uh, but like the next time you're playing against bots and you see this particular scenario or players, and if you do recognize it, that's gonna help you a lot. Like, I don't expect everything, every piece of information I throw at you today to stick, but if some of them will, and they should, it should, if some of the plays that you would have became aware of today and proceeded to execute it in your games, that would win you a lot of matches just okay. by trying new things. So yeah. That was a very confusing thought I just said, I would imagine, but basically to sum up is that if you see the enemy standing this close to the tower range, one remnant, and he will eat a lot of damage. Because he would be pulled into the tower and the tower would start attacking him. Uh, one more thing. Make it, I mean, think it, think about it. Think about a new habit of clicking the enemy heroes. Because there's always a lot of information you can get just from briefly clicking the enemy heroes. Like right now, uh, what information do you think you can gather from this screen? information I can gather maybe like his ability like how no actually I'm, hmm. I'm not sure the only thing is his mana is low but that's it it's not even that low it's half <laughs> what what do you see yeah you you are right it's the mana pool if yeah. you can see his combo the creepy five and the nether blast it costs 165 and with the bottle he only has mana for two three combos. So if you manage to eat the combos and not die until he gets sources of mana, he is next to useless in lane and can be either bullied out or will not be able to prevent you from last hits. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so again, something to keep in mind is that if you see an enemy becoming be uh, being in a disadvantageous position, you can punish it for him. Punish him for it. Like that's one more blast, and in your head, if you would keep count, that after one or two more blasts, he would be, he would stop 
become stop being such a huge threat he was before. True. Again, uh, he is gone. You can safely assume he went to take your bounty uh, in the jungle. So that's your cue. Cue again. Push the lane ASAP. Why did we do that? Uh, one is that Bugna will not be able to harass us because he's not here. And two, by the time he comes back, he will miss half the creeps. So either he will miss half the creeps or he will be forced to use teleport which in on itself is a hundred gold lost for him. Either way, if you put, if you wave clear those creeps ASAP, that's a good play for you and a bad play for him. Anyway, we'll look at it. So him, him going for the bounty rune was a bad play? Yes. It opened, for you as a storm, it opened a possibility to wave clear those creeps and create a disadvantageous position for him by forcing him to either use the TP scroll or miss creeps. I mean, it, it wasn't a particularly bad play for him, but it opened up an opportunity for you to abuse it to your advantage. Yeah, so I could get the creeps and then go get the Banyan rune. Yeah, yeah. And in the end, you're forced to abandon your own creep wave, which simply deepened the disadvantage you had. Yeah. So yeah, I think uh, you can start seeing the big picture, how a lot of small puzzle pieces, if we went at things differently, this matchup would turn out complete, completely differently. Uh, Best case scenario, you would have won the lane because Bugna has presented many opportunities for you to, well, punish him. Worst case scenario, you would simply draw even because Bugna would soon run out of mana. And this is the this will be the common concept in all your matches is that as soon as you start recognizing those little things, as you start to get better at at recognizing those little things, at executing them, a lot of matches where you think you would get stomped will simply become so much easier. Uh, Pugna's specific thing is that I understand that as soon as he decrepifies you, you want to cancel the Nether Blast, but it's not that efficient because it lasts too long, so in the end you're just wasting Vortex, you're not able to do the combo because you're still disarmed and he still has time to cast Nether Blast and you still take extra damage. The better way is to simply wait out until the Decopify ends and then hit him with the Vortex combo. Okay. Or not, him, not hit him at all. Because if he's not low then there's no point, if he will just travel to the rune and heal it up. Again, mana is a resource, you have to save as much mana as possible. Right now, same scenario. Pugna is gone. You could push the, the creep wave. But now, even if you wanted to, you wouldn't yeah, have man. the mana to do so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't do that. Man, don't do I think you understand can you understand yourself why we don't do that? Do what the word or the Yeah the word. Yeah, because he just can uh, word it and like get it easy for him, I guess. That's right. Yeah. If Bugna is walking somewhere, he's not last hitting. That means he has his camera absolutely free. And there's a real, real, really high chance he would watch the mid lane, he would watch what you're doing. And he would absolutely spot this word placement and award it immediately. Yeah, I assumed he wouldn't see, so <laughs> just like a, it's a bad assumption, I guess. Yeah, as a mid lane, which we, we try to play to make plays to make less less plays by assumptions and more plays by the concrete facts of what would happen. Okay. Assumptions are never good. 
Oh yeah, the hack run miss. Yeah. Uh, little bit note on little note on itemization. You you, while you still want the magic stick to collect charges, the stats are better from null talisman. So you might want to finish null first before upgrading a stick to wand. Oh, there we go. The future you has listened to past me and attempted a block. Oh, so close. Unlucky with the Rubik. I didn't expect the Rubik there. I would have killed him without the Rubik. <laughs> yeah, 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 would have. <laughs> you actually would have killed him with the Rubik because uh, there was one charge just sent fairly far. Oh, actually, least. you're right. You actually just didn't click him out. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't blame you. It's a hit at the moment. I will only blame you for the uh, mechanical stuff you're not thinking about. Uh, what information would you think should be in your head after your death? After my what? Sorry? After my death? Yeah, I mean, you died. Yep. Now you're responding. What, what were you thinking about? Well, I was about, like, about, okay. About, yeah. about the next steps, I mean. Okay, I, he was like, I just looked at the side lanes, I guess, and I was like, okay, I'm not level 6 yet, or uh, so I can't do anything, I'm gonna go get level 6 and maybe go bully the side lanes a little bit, since Pugna is a lot more stronger than me now, and if I stay in lane, he's just gonna like keep bullying me further. So that's what I thought about. But he was level 6 too, so I assumed he's gonna go region and like gank something, since the lane is already pushed and, you know. You are 90% correct. About everything, about except that the Pugna is strong. After this gang, you have a lot of information around you to make a decision. So let's let's see what information we do have. He right now is low health, low mana. The bottle is empty. He has no way to regain mana. It's only five minutes. He will respawn way before the runes appear. Six minute runes. So, your current closest objective is to reach level 6, and if Pugna is still at the lane with his current health status, that's your main objective, is to kill Pugna, because he's really, really weak. But as, uh, like I said, it's the main objective, but it's not the only objective. So, your thought process should be this. If Pugna shows in the wave with his current health, I will kill him. If Pugna does not show, I will look for other plays. If Pugna shows and he's refreshed, I will look for other plays. Okay. But as of this moment, your full focus should be getting level 6 and getting a kill on Pugna. Because... If I intercept the... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, please continue. I said, oh, if I... Because I said, if probably if I could hit level 6 from the next wave and go intercept the rune, I think that actually ruins his... Uh... I can like beat him after, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah, you won't be able to regen, yeah. yeah. You, you will absolutely get level 6 from this wave. Yeah. I should have just rushed it instead of trying to last hitting it. Yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, just force, forces. Yeah. And again, take notes of the enemy movements, like. If if he would be aware that he would hit level six on this wave, 
like you saw Pugna walk away on the minimap or not, you can see him going this direction. This tells you that he will want to last hit the small camp and then pick up the rune, the bounty rune as soon as it spawns. So yeah, if you're certain that you would hit level 6 on this wave, your current objective should be to wave clear this ASAP, get your 6 ASAP, and then try to meet up with, uh, with uh, Pugna before the 6 minute mark, before he gets a chance to be refreshed. Yeah. Basically, I'm, I'm just trying to give you ways of thinking, of planning in advance. Like right now, uh, Perfectly. not even right now. Uh, as soon as you see your wave right here, you can be certain that any wave will be mirrored. It will arrive the same way. So you can just walk and kill the ranged creep ASAP, which would give you level 6. And that would allow you to meet up with Konka, uh, Bagna, and most likely kill him. Yeah, 100%. Basically, there's a lot of plays you can make if you would try to map map out the future steps. Or, in other words, if you if you um, pom 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 how I say this if you play passively things will happen to you. If you play whatever the opposite is of passively, you will make things happen. Uh, yeah, one more little thing about the ward is even if you have placed it on on this vision, uh, try to at least cover one of the rune spots so you can gather information on the runes. Yeah, that's hundred percent. Yeah. So to sum up the earlier part of the laning phase, there were a lot of opportunities that we have missed either because we were not planning ahead or we were not responding to the situations where the opponent has presented a punishable movement. Uh, do not commit, do not attempt to commit until you're absolutely certain. You can either deal a lot of damage or get a kill. Because these kind of movements will just waste their mana. Like here. If you would have reacted earlier, I think it would have very easily been a kill. If you would have pulled him under the tower there. right here, yes. It's off cooldown, he's still under the tower. One quick You can vortex from there? You can zip and then vortex. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. You're level 6 by now. Well, I mean, yeah, a lot of these mistakes are also because you're mechanically new at Storm. So we can't, we cannot hold you accountable for those just yet. Right here, I was kind of mad because he healed off me all the way, so he's healthy, and I'm now I was like, okay, now I actually completely entered the lane. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's what happens. Uh, okay, so let's talk about another thought process is that as soon as you can conclude that the enemy mid laner is no longer a kill lane, that's where you can f uh, switch your full attention into the jungle. Okay. Which I assume you are doing right now with this camp. Yeah. Right now, I would say with, with a killed, failed, 
failed kill attempt on the Pugna. You shouldn't even be looking to lane unless the creeps are meeting at your tower. Because anytime you come close, he will he will definitely deal a lot of damage and you will have to spend mana just to get away. And this man is better spent on the jungle creeps. Yeah. Where, where, how do you, okay, so how do you efficiently, like, from here, where do you go to farm the jungle? You just go to the other side and just to farm there, or do you go try to get the ancients? Because I don't think the ancients are worth it, like, right? Like the small ones and the... Uh... Uh, I don't think at this point it's, it's, it's... I don't think it's worth over overcomplicating jungle at this point. Just go to whatever the closest camp is to the root spawns at the moment which is, would be the small camp, or, or the camp here. Ideally, you should stack the camp before clearing it to be more mana efficient. But again, something is better than nothing, and certainly better than staying in a lane you cannot stay at. Okay. Well, do you have any further questions for about what we have discussed so far? No, I think uh, I think it covered pretty much like how the whole thing went and all the small details that actually added up together and I lost the lane because of it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I don't want to overload you with information. There was a lot of new stuff I imagined for this. So I, I would say unless you still have fresh thoughts on your mind you would like to discuss about, we could end this here. And I will let you have some bot practices or live matches with you having more thoughts about doing particular things in a particular way. Um, questions would be, hmm. So in so in in this situation, if you're playing this game and you let's say you just lost the pugna right there, you would just like farm the jungle and try to take it out on the side lanes, pretty much, right? Uh, because of how weak. We are after the laning phase, side lanes are out of the question. We only make place in the side lanes if side lanes if we are if we drew the lane. Like for example, there there, there will be lanes uh, where you can where it's not a kill lane, but it's not a lost lane either. So let's say same shadow friend. Uh, if you're not comfortable killing him, he cannot kill you either because he has no lockdown and stuff. So you can just wave clear it under the tower, farm jungle, and you would still be pretty much even on farm. Pogna, as soon as you show, you are facing death threats. And in this particular match, because it left you so weak, you are still in no position to just go to the summit and make place. So, um, to generalize your, your question, the answer is, if the laning left you weak, then it's only jungle for you, buddy. It's only jungle for me? Okay. Because I feel like even if I'm that weak, okay. I just thought even if I'm that weak, like I'm still level 7, I can probably go kill a level 5 side laner. That's, that was my thought process. That, that doesn't give you really give you anything. I mean, uh, decombined, uh, gold, experience, space, made is still less because of how much resources you had to spend. Like if you had better items, if you had better levels, this means you would need to spend less resources on the kills. But with your with, with you as is, you're simply too weak to make efficient trades. Even if you get a kill, that would leave you with no mana, no health. That would leave you vulnerable, exposed to any rotation. So best case scenario, uh, you get a kill and you walk to base because you have emptied everything. Worst case scenario, you die. Either way, those are not those are not good outcomes. Okay, so just farm, got okay or something, and from there start ganking. Yeah, farm until you feel comfortable that your okay. champs will still leave leave you with enough resources to not go to base. Okay, is is there uh, since you play like obviously you play like storm spray a lot? Is there like a matchup where like you say, okay, I'm not going with storm spray into this matchup whatsoever, like a mid laner, or you just send it? <laughs> Uh, I think there are exactly zero matchups. Okay, nice. Where you, guess... where you would not want to play Storm Spirit because even if the lane goes to shit, you can always fall back to jungle. 
Okay, that makes sense. You so, can yeah, I, I would say you can play Storm into everything, absolutely everything. Dispatch, everything. Okay. So yeah, if there's nothing else on your mind, we should end the session here then. Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna try to. Uh, I'm gonna get some like games going, and I'm gonna hey up later. And yep. See if you have time. Go ahead. Okay, man. Good Thank luck, you. Good luck. Yeah.